Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for April 9th, 2020. So yesterday we had a great rally in the market. All 11 sectors of the market saw an upside move. So let's take a look at the technicals. So settle in, let's see what we can look forward to today, what we have affecting the market. Grab yourself something to drink and let's prepare for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, guys, we have kind of an interesting situation and that is, well, interesting for me because I was kind of tricked by the economic calendar. I don't know why um, this happened to me, but there is a CPI number coming out on Friday. And I was looking at the economic calendar and completely spaced off that Friday was Good Friday and the market will be closed on Friday. So kind of got a little bit um, uh, well, I tricked myself and hopefully I didn't um, incorrectly uh, trick any of you as well. Hopefully you were uh, more uh, alert to the situation than I was. But Friday, the market will be closed for Good Friday. And um, surprisingly, they are going to put out a CPI number on Friday. Um, that is expected to show a fairly sharp decline. It'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to that on Monday, or if we just kind of space it off and forget about it. But today, it's all about the jobless claims. At 8.30 a.m. this morning, we're gonna get a jobless claims number. The jobless claims estimates are expected to um, show more than 5 million people. Additional folks have lost their jobs due to the virus impacts. Um, pretty rough situation um, to be dealing with. And obviously the market could have some major impacts right after that report. So as we look at the more, uh, morning right now, we've been rather flat, but just um, in the last few minutes, we saw a little bit of pressure pushing things down. Right now, Dow is looking to open down about 122 points, but that is, you know, um, going to change dramatically depending on how uh, that number comes out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at the technicals. Technicals here in the chart are kind of interesting. Now, yesterday, although we just had this broad base rally, a lot of things moving up, notice we didn't quite make it to break through the high of Wednesday. So we are still respecting this price resistance in the chart, which is kind of interesting with all of the back and forth that we've seen. However, what that does show us is that we do have an upward trend in play and that we're just respecting that price resistance. Now with these claims numbers, it could be an interesting situation whether we sell back off or not. But if we can hold in this range right in here, if we can even if we pull back all the way into here, but hold in this range, I see that as a bullish sign here in the market. If we can hold that, that's the big if we can hold that. But let's watch that closely. At least there's some glimmer of hope here um, in the charts. If we look at our uh, technical indicators, notice that we are still very far away from the 50-day moving average. We should really put out of our mind the idea that this is going to be a V-style bottom. Um, and we should expect more pullback or at a minimum some consolidation as uh, the technical damage in this chart still has a lot of work to overcome. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, very similar situation. It attempted to break through. In fact, it popped through that, uh, that Wednesday high, but was not able to hold it by the close. If we take a look at a short-term chart here, you can see that we popped through we came through there yesterday, but just couldn't hold on to it by the close and pushed just ever so slightly back below that level. So this morning, it is also still respecting here this price resistance level in the chart. And we're going to have to watch that pretty closely ahead of um, that jobs number. Now, as you can see right here, um, we're looking for a little gap down here this morning. Unfortunately, that 
that gap down could lose that 34 EMA uh, support area in the chart. But once again, we have that little positiveness going on here that we have that trend that respect to that resistance. And this area here that if we were to pull back and wind around and rest in here, I think that's still pretty darn bullish situation considering um, all of the impacts that, uh, well, we have yet to experience um, in earnings um, for uh, this virus situation. So pretty, pretty surprising that we are responding this strongly back up, to be honest. Uh, for me anyway, to be honest, with um, so many unknowns still out there. Let's take a look at the Qs. QQQ remains the strongest index in the market. Technically, as you can see, we um, held on to our 500 day. We rallied up, broke above our 34 EMA here, and we closed the day yesterday just slightly above that 200 day moving average recovering it for the close yesterday um, right now this morning we're looking at this gap down however that will lose that level and we'll want to watch that pretty closely and keep in mind that 50 day moving average is still diving and by next week we may be um, looking at that 50 day moving average pushing down to create that level of resistance right in here in the chart that may take a little bit of while for the market to be able to break through may need some really good earnings reports or something to do that and notice that we are dealing with some price resistance here in the chart last but not least iwm it still remains the weakest index out there with its 50 day crossing down its 500 its 200 day crossing down the 500 and yesterday we did rally enough to just barely squeak out a high above that wind Wednesday high. So we have that good technical pattern here as well where we have rallied. We're watching these resistance levels in the chart and then that possibility um, of a pullback today um, coming into, into play that we could wind around in this area. Now I don't want to rule out the possibility that the jobless number gets ignored and we move on higher into this three-day weekend, but we're going to want to be pretty careful because the farther and farther we stretch this rally up, the further away we get from support levels and that possibility that a one day event, a big news report could reverse us and move us back lower. Let's take a look at the um, VIX. Whoops. The VIX, whoop, still got the wrong chart. There we go. The VIX continued to pull back yesterday after that nice move. So we're approaching that 50 day moving average here in the VIX. And if we take a look at some drawings that I have here on the chart, we're pushing back down into a potential level of support right in here in that 50 moving up. So we'll wanna watch this for that possibility of a reemergence of fear. Um, but we'll just have to watch that closely. And what could create that would be maybe next week as we start getting into earnings and how um, how uh, the outbreak has affected uh, company reports. Um, estimates are all over the place on how companies will be reporting. Um, somewhere between about um, 20 and 30 plus percent decline in earnings is what um, analysts are expecting. Boy, anything anything could be possible. And, and we're just kind of trying to shoot in the dark um, on that because we've never had numbers like this. We've never seen um, uh, unemployment numbers of this size before here in the United States. So um, it's, it's a bit of a, um, uh, you know, we're shooting at a target that we can't see. It's pitch black and we just can't see. So anything is possible. We'll want to be careful of that. But watch those levels of support for that possibility that the VIX could still respond back higher. Let's take a look at T2122. This is kind of interesting. T2122, not only have we recovered um, dramatically, but we went from completely um, um, oversold in this bullish reversal zone to very, very overbought 
um, in a short term on uh, T2122. So that possibility that we're up here in that bearish reversal zone, that place where we could get some pullback is um, pretty obvious. Now, uh, having said that, we have seen some really odd moves here in T2122 here lately because we've been at such extremes. And we stayed down here in this bearish reversal zone for quite some time here. It is entirely possible that we move up into here and we bounce around up in here for a while. That would be that consolidation that we would like to see. A little bit of rest in the market that we'd like to see could keep us up in that area. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Um, what I've been talking about and uh, what I will uh, point out here this morning is we have a lot going on here in this calendar with jobless claims this morning, a PPI number this morning that certainly could move us around. We will hear from Jerome Powell and we'll get consumer sentiment numbers. These consumer sentiment numbers are expected to decline rather sharply. So pretty, um, pretty busy morning here on the economic calendar, a lot for the market to potentially react to we'll have to wait and see um, what happens obviously and then of course later today we have a natural gas report we have a fed speaker as well here at 1 p.m and we have the fed balance sheet which may be kind of interesting um, with all of the uh, fed operations underway this could this could alarm the market just a little bit with the massive spike um, in what the Fed is picking up in their balance sheet. So we might want to watch that one closely um, later today. Um, now, what's going to be interesting is as we head into this three-day weekend, a market close tomorrow, we're going to get a CPI report. We're also hearing news that OPEC and OPEC partners are going to be meeting on Friday, trying to come up with an, an historic cut in oil production to relieve some of the supply um, glut that we have here, um, well, we have around the world. And um, it will be interesting to see. Now, if they get a major cut, that could certainly bolster um, oil stocks um, considerably. And if that were the case, we would have um, a possibility of a, a bad CPI number affecting us negatively, um, an oil supply um, uh, production cut helping to improve the market significantly. It's going to be an interesting situation as we come into Monday and we face um, um, an earnings season with so many unknowns. So please keep in mind, we've got a lot on our plate. So the reason I'm bringing that up is how important it's going to be to plan your um, your risk into this weekend very carefully. Anything is possible by Monday morning. If you hold trades, they could be wildly higher, wildly lower uh, on Monday morning. And let's just keep in mind that virus totals just continue to climb. There, there may be an, an ever so slight improvement um, in the number of infections out of New York, but let's face the facts, guys. New York is now has the largest number of infected uh, coronavirus infections in the world. They have the title. Now, um, that's not a happy title to have. And those death tolls continue to rise uh, pretty substantially. Maybe less than what was expected, but let's not discount the fact that um, they are still on the rise significantly. So here we are looking at 435,000 um, infections in the United States, nearly 15,000 deaths. And that's before they start reporting today. Um, we could certainly see uh, by next week, half a million infections across the US. So um, those numbers are pretty substantial and the impacts to uh, business and the healthcare system um, are very, very substantial. So think about that carefully and plan your risk into the weekend very, very carefully. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. We've got about 45 companies reporting earnings today, but honestly, really nothing much in that earnings um, uh, area that 
is is very notable. Probably one of the most notable that I see um, would be SJR. SJR um, Communications, well, they'll be reporting today. Um, we'll have to wait and see, but I can't really see much of anything in that um, earnings list that's notable. And as a matter of fact, since we're closed on Friday, I'll just let you know the Friday earnings reports, there's only uh, a handful of, uh, as a matter of fact, exactly five expected to report tomorrow, and none of those would be particularly notable as well. So um, just something to keep in mind for uh, your week ahead. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, if you guys could do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up. And if you feel that this video was helpful to you in uh, making helping you prepare, looking at those technicals, being ready for the market open today, if you could please do me a favor and also click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. Truly, truly appreciate it. And um, thank you so much because you continue to help this channel grow. As a matter of fact, we're getting very, very close to 10,000 subscribers. You guys are just awesome. I'm very humbled by that. Thank you so much. Um, when I started doing this, I just had no idea anyone would be particularly interested in this, but I'm so glad that you are and thank you very much for all your kindness. You guys, you guys rock. So with that, let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. Now, please keep in mind that I'm going to be very, very cautious about picking up trades and um, doing things here in those trades um, heading into a three day weekend. But if you want to do some quicker intraday trades, I think that is certainly acceptable. And of course, if you're more of a value trader that believes that overall the market is responding up, as you guys know, um, I'm in XLE and, and in just, um, just a week, I'm up 20% in XLE buying, uh, buying that stock. I just bought the ETF because um, the options were terribly priced, um, and so I just went ahead and bought the ETF, and you know, within a week period of time, up 20%. So stock is pretty much acting like um, options um, um, as it is, and this has that possibility that it could go even higher. You can see it's gapping up a little bit this morning. It has that possibility of going even higher if they do come to some kind of an, uh, an agreement. Um, uh, you know this weekend with OPEC so keep an eye on that uh, pretty interesting um, chart to be watching and there's a lot of charts out there looking um, along those lines you know we see stocks like Coca-Cola Coca-Cola looking really good that defensive sector holding up in here you can see breaking that downtrend holding it as support moving up through these levels holding in here now we didn't break back through that um, high on Wednesday but any kind of rest or consolidation in here, I believe, is bullish. And as this moves back over into its trend, there is great opportunity in stocks like that. Seeing that here in Coke, seeing it in um, some of the tech sector stocks like NVIDIA breaking higher, as you can see here, holding some support levels, um, holding up yesterday. So any rest consolidation in here looks like a productive um, consolidation. So we're going to see a lot of those kind of charts. Now, places that you um, want to be a little bit careful of, I think, are in the financial sector. If we take a look at XLF, XLF is also holding up. Uh, pretty nicely here um, overall but we want to be careful with this because next week we're going to start to hear from these banks on their earnings reports so I would be a little bit careful as much as I, I think this chart has great potential I'm being a little bit cautious and careful of this ahead of their reports um, I don't expect banks to report all that well although they're very very good at um, number crunching and, and, and honestly number manipulating, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how the banks come out of this um, uh, with so many loan forgivenesses and, and uh, failures that they are likely to experience. So we'll have to wait and see, but watch that in XLF. Other places that are just looking very, very good like Microsoft. 
Now, Microsoft, I've expected this and, and talked about this many times already. Microsoft has very little impact, um, uh, virus impact. As a matter of fact, they are probably gaining some benefit um, out of people staying home because the majority of their business anymore is in the cloud. Of course, they have electronic sales and things like that that might be affected, but overall, Microsoft's still looking very good here in the chart. And as you can see, we've pushed up through into this area um, there's a little bit of support, a little bit of resistance in this area. And if this were to pull back and um, or consolidate in this zone right in here, there's that opportunity of picking up um, some upside trades. We've certainly broken the downtrend, held it as support. Microsoft looking pretty good. Um, other places, AMD. Um, AMD looking pretty good, as you can see here, uh, breaking back through these resistance levels. We even have an inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, that has developed here on AMD. Any kind of rest, pullback, or consolidation to come back over into this trend and hold support areas, I think sets up an opportunity for AMD. Watch that closely. Other places that really look pretty good that have good, uh, good signs in it is, is just those those staples, um, uh, places where you're going to go get those staples, um, like uh, WMT, um, Walmart still holding up, looking very, very good. Um, it has been extremely volatile, but as you can see, has recovered and holding up here. If this holds up in this area, consolidates a little bit, there again is that trend situation, kind of pulling back or holding into this area, opens up that opportunity for a stock like Walmart. So just a few stocks for you to look at. Once again, I want to encourage everyone to be very, very careful. Plan very carefully as we head into this three-day weekend and the uncertainty of it. I want to wish you all a very, very happy Easter holiday. Everyone take care of yourselves. Folks, just be very safe. And and and, and once again, a big shout out. While all of us um, here as, as traders will be taking the day off and kind of having a relaxing weekend, think about all of those folks that are ill, the healthcare workers, the first responders, the police and fire that are out there doing their jobs, protecting us in this situation and for all of those healthcare workers, the nurses, the doctors, all of those folks that are on the front lines of this battle. Big shout out to you. Thank you so much for all that you do. And please, everyone, be safe. We'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a great weekend.